Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we've got the Prusa Mini, but the Feistech clone of it. Um, is it as good as the Prusa Mark III clone and should you buy it? But first, roll those credits. Welcome back. So, uh, we are looking at the Feistech clone of the Prusa Mini. So, um, should you buy it? No. Video over. But let's go into some details about why. So, when you buy the actual, uh, when you buy the actual Prusa Mini, all of this and this uh, are already assembled. Um, you literally bolt them onto the bed. They come in like, you know, three or four parts. You put the screen on and you're pretty much away and up and printing very, very quickly. Uh, that isn't the case with the Feistech. So the Feistech is as DIY as the DIY Mark III is. The problem is, is that the, is that the Mark III comes with a full set of step-by-step -step instructions that are nice and easy to follow. And this does not. You have to print your own parts. Um, which I printed in ASAX, and I don't know whether or not I just didn't print them accurately enough, but a lot of my parts just didn't work as well as they should. Uh, one of the main things is um, Prusa, for whatever reason, has decided to use, I think it's like a Mark 8 coupler on the, um, on the Bowden part that goes in here, um, but when you buy normal couplers, the normal push fittings, um, they're either like a Mark 10 um, or they are, um, they're, like a, they're like a 5 mil. Um, so neither of those fit, which means you have to print a little adapter that screws in and then theoretically lets you screw the rest of the Bowden in. Problem is, is that's in a plastic thread and the thread wears and it doesn't, it doesn't hold up particularly well. Um, you have to always unscrew this to get filament to feed through properly because it catches on the bottom of the, um, of the coupler and it's just not that great. So I'm probably going to end up doing a Bontech upgrade on this um, so that I can get that part printing better. That seems to be the only real issue. Um, the other issue is that there are step-by-step -step instructions on the Feistech website. Uh, sorry, on the Feistech GitHub even. Um, you have to print a Feistech screen cover because the screen that this comes with is slightly different to the Prusa Mini screen. Um, and so far, I have not been able to get this filament sensor working properly. Um, the again, this is probably down to the tolerances that I've printed at in in this ASAX, but um, but the friction is so bad inside of this that my filament just snags and it's almost impossible to use. So um, so I'm not using the filament sensor at the moment, um, which is a real waste because I prefer to use that. Um, in its defence, had the parts have printed better and had I have found the GitHub sooner maybe this build would have gone a lot easier and a lot smoother. You do get the Meanwell power supply brick um, and it's a copy of whatever board is inside of this. It's not an Einzy Rambo, it's, some, it's, a, it's a board that they made for the, uh, for the Prussian Mini. You do get a clone one of those and it seems to be, again, an exact duplicate. Um, it prints well. But because I've got these issues with this extruder, where um, where it seems to bind up and it just it just clogs, um, and I've got my issues with the Bowden tube, um, where again it's just not working as it should, um, I actually only got two prints out of this before it clogged, and um, I haven't really been able to get a good print out of it since. I've tried to do the spiral vase that we did on the uh, that we did on the Elf, and that I have done on a couple of the Flash Forges. Um, and I literally have tried like seven or eight times every time it clogs. So we'll do the Bond Tech upgrade and we'll see whether or not that makes it any better. What I will say is that once you add the price of a Bond Tech upgrade, this is not far off of how much an actual Prusa Mini costs. And quite frankly, for how much even the clone costs, I would much rather have a Ender 3 V2 or a longer LK4 Pro or something along the lines of that rather than the cost of this. Frankly, for the cost of this, I'd rather have a Sidewinder X1 
because this is 185 pound to buy from um, to buy from AliExpress. But if you were buying a real Prusa Mini, if I remember rightly, with the upgrades and the bed on there, I think it comes out at about 350. And for the build volume that you have on this, for me, this is a machine that I will probably almost never use. Um, as you've seen from the channel, we do a lot of big prints. Um, and I just don't have much of a use for a machine of this size. Um, the build volume for me is just too small. For an extra £40, I could have had the Feistec Mark III clone, and that to me is much, much better and much more useful than the build volume that's on this. But, to its credit, it did print a couple of things, so let's show you what it printed first, and then we'll do some final thoughts. So, first things first, we have the Spiral Cube. I really like doing this cube, it, um, it, it highlights overhangs really well, it highlights layers and, and how well it does walls and it highlights how good the part cooling is. Now obviously this is the bottom, so this prints like this, everything that is here printed with no supports whatsoever. I have scaled the cube up by uh, up to 200% because that just seems to be what we do here. Um, so, uh, so the overhangs there are not terrible, um, some of these are a little Hold on, where are we? Some of these are a little bad. Um, but again, you've got to bear in mind, this is printing in complete mid-air. So this is a bridge going from here to here. Um, so, you know, that's, that's not awful. It's just not what you would necessarily want. Um, we've got the traditional XYZ cube. There was a little bit of, of Z banding on it. Um, and I had a couple of burnt bits of filament. But overall, first layer is actually quite nice and it printed really quite well nice a good amount of extrusion on the top there so not bad print quality so we come back to should you buy this machine and the answer is no no you shouldn't um this is this is not the same sort of saving that you get with the mark three so the Mark III comes out at, I think, about 230, 240 odd pound. Um, you can print your own parts, or you can pay the 30 pound extra and get those printed in Petchy and delivered to you as well. Um, the regular machine is like 700 pounds to buy, um, and then it's like 1,000 pound if you want the whole thing re like completely assembled and shipped to you as, as just one unit you take out. Um, the savings on this just don't, they just don't warrant it. Like if, you want the, if you want a Prusa Mini, um, then go and buy a Prusa Mini. Um, but if you want a machine that is small and easy to use and easy to set up, buy the Ender 3 V2 or buy the longer LK4 or even the new BQ that, um, that comes with the setup for Octoprint that's on Kickstarter at the moment. Um, they're all functionally better machines than this. They are better set up, they are producing consistently better results for both me and Mike. Um, we obviously haven't tested the BigQ yet, but from the videos that I've seen of um, Make Angus over at Makers Muse, um, you know, it, it's producing high quality prints. Um, and frankly, I don't understand what Prusa thought they were going to fill what niche they thought they were going to get when they produced this machine. If their machine was £200, I'd say, do you know what? For the quality of the machine, buying it direct from Prusa, I'd say get an original one, not the clone. Um, frankly, for the £180 that this cost, it's just a machine that I don't feel I'm going to use that much. Even once I fit the bomb tech and everything else, I'll maybe print some heads on it. Like I'll go down to, I'll maybe put a 0.2 nozzle on it and I'll go down to a 0.12 layer height uh, and maybe I'll do some, some heads and things on it. But I just don't feel like this has a specific place in my workshop or a niche that it's going to fill that I needed. Um, unlike things like the Sidewinder that has direct drive, the longer that is just producing quality results 
the Prusa Mark III that I've got that is, um, that is again, producing fantastic results and printing really quickly, or the new Creativity Elf that I've got, which is a Core XY, linear rails, a decent build volume, and again, is producing stuff at speed, or even, to an extent, the Jenny printer, which is fully enclosed and allows me to print ABS-style filaments and things like that. This is not fulfilling a need for me. I do not need a build volume this size, um, and I certainly don't need the unreliability of after producing two prints really quite well, um, it just stops working, you know? Um, so you can see that this is all printed in the same, in the same blue filament, um, and, uh, and the spiral cube was going in that as well. So it's not like it, it screwed itself up in between filament changes or when I changed for just in between prints it just crapped itself and I don't need that level of unreliability I need machines that I can just click and forget I need machines that are reliable that I can put things on walk away and not have to worry about whether or not they're going I'm going to come back and they're going to finish um, so yeah it's an unfortunate one really because I really loved the Mark III Feistech that we got um, unfortunately, I just don't think this is good enough. Um, if Feistech end up watching this, I would say the best thing you could do would be to include the printed parts, printed in PETG, um, for, for this machine. It, just include the printed parts for it. If you did just that um, and made sure that there was um, the instruction manual on the, uh, on the USB stick that you give people, um, if you just did that, I think that uh, this would be a better machine overall. Um, also, stop pretending this is Capricorn tube. It's not, it's just blue PFTE and the tolerance on it is terrible. Um, stop using it. Either, either give people real Capricorn tube or just use the white stuff. This is, this is a pay limitation and frankly just causes issues. So they're the only two bits of advice I could give you on this. P provide the printed parts in PETG and get rid of the fake Capricorn tube because you're really not fooling anybody there. Um, other than that, keep an eye on the channel. Um, we've got uh, we've got a few things coming up. We've got a few more reviews coming up. Mike's new uh, Mike's got his war rig from Mad Max. Uh, the the Gam body file. He'll be finishing that off soon, and we'll be seeing just how absolutely massive that is. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got a few few exciting projects coming up. So keep it on the channel and thanks for joining. See you later guys.